Hey everybody, it's Sean, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you some information about PDFs, PDF presets, how to save one, what they are, when to use them, why to use them, and uh, just overall, why they're awesome. So, in, uh, in this to sort of get going, I guess, uh, I'm using the same postcard file that we just worked on with resizing, and now it's time for us to export a PDF. To do so, you can go under File, PDF, Pre, uh, Adobe PDF presets and you'll notice that you have a handful to choose from right here you also have the define option or we can also go to export just depends on which one you'd like to do first really so I'm gonna click on export and uh, I'm just gonna dump it one stage up from the Z final and we're going to call this uh, postcard sounds good we can hit save after you do that you get your export PDF menu and there's a bunch of things in here that are really useful to know. So the first one is high, the preset. It already wants to use the high quality print modified version. Um, totally cool. Uh, high quality print is a really great preset to use when you're going to be dealing with things that are on a home printer or a Xerox machine. Um, anything that uses process colors when printing. Uh, you see how understanding colors is very important when you start to get to the end of your documents. Um, I'm going to leave this on high quality print and in this dialog box here you can notice that we can already have control over how many pages we'd like to print if we'd like it to be spreads or uh, processed as pages. This is crucial when you're um, printing out things for uh, magazines, brochures, all sorts of different stuff. In this case, this would just be a page because these documents are not facing pages, um, so they don't create a spread. Uh, you could also tell it the range of pages you'd like it to um, print. So if you clicked on range, um, we could set uh, we could set a parameter like one through two, which in this case is actually just all, but you get the point. Um, we could also tell it uh, something kind of important to view the PDF after exporting. Uh, this is something that really frustrated me when I first started out because I couldn't figure out why my PDFs were never opening. And then I realized it was because of this. So that's just something to note. This is also one of those things though, if you have a lot of programs open at once, this can really slow down your computer. So just be mindful of when you have this turned on or off. Uh, the last thing uh, that you could point out here, optimize for fast web view. That's great. You don't have to worry about embedding thumbnails or anything like that right now. Um, and later on, when we start to get into uh, things like creating web links, um, this is important to note if you're creating an interactive PDF. Uh, if you're working on a book, for example, um, you might be able, uh, you might want to include things like bookmarks. Um, Non-printable objects, that's for special finishes on certain aspects of, of your print job. We don't have to worry about that. And guides and grids we can leave off. Uh, the next thing that I want to sort of bring to your attention, and this is where your preset really gets into the nitty gritty details of things, is your compression. Um, high quality prints, uh, they won't compress a whole lot of information. They're going to leave your um, images at 300 pixels per inch regardless of if they're color or grayscale. If they're monochromatic, um, being one of the smallest file types, they can actually leave it at a huge uh, resolution because they take up almost no space. Now, if we were using something like uh, smallest file size, you'll notice that they compress the files down even more. And this is useful when you're sending something through email, um, if you just need to post it online, for example, this is more than appropriate for online usage. Uh, just anything that doesn't necessarily need to go to final output as a print, uh, you could do as, fine, uh, as uh, smallest file size. That's totally more than okay. Under marks and bleeds, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with this from last year, but just a little bit of a uh, just a little bit of a recap here. Um, crop marks are the little tick marks that you'll get at the edge of your uh, at the edge of your actual document. Bleed marks are the tick marks you'll get up here at your bleed. Registration marks, those are actually things that are meant for printers, and you don't necessarily need to check them on, but they can be useful. 
color bars as well, typically something left uh, for your printer to deal with. Um, this just makes sure that the colors that are being printed through your printer are accurate um, and actually displaying the proper cyan, yellow, magenta, and black uh, values. And then finally, your page information. Um, what page of what is this in the document? And uh, who designed it? There's all sorts of information that comes up on page information. I would almost always suggest using document bleed settings. You took so much care at the beginning of setting up your document that making sure to use the document bleed settings is pretty important. Um, finally, output, things like color conversion. Uh, you don't have to worry about this unless your printer actually gives you specific notes on um, making sure that you have a specific color profile applied. Um, advanced, same thing, not a whole lot to worry about in here unless you're getting really into the nitty gritty of special printing practices. Security is kind of an interesting one because if you're working on a top super secret project for a really big client and uh, you really can't risk anything getting out, you could require a password to open and you can also restrict things like printing, editing, and other tasks in the security tab. And finally, under summary, this is just a really good explanation of all of the settings that you've applied. Um, and that's basically it. So I'm just going to make sure, yep, I have all of the marks and stuff that I want to have on. And uh, I'm pretty good with these settings. Let's just pretend for a moment, though, that this is a preset you're going to be using all the time for this client. We can actually call this um, HQ print all marks. And we could hit OK. And now, from now on, anytime, I'm just going to cancel out of this for a second. And I'm going to go to Adobe PDF presets. And hey, what do you know? HQ print all marks sitting right there. You can actually hit desktop, or sorry, we can actually tell it that we're going to save it here. We can hit save. And when it opens up our PDF dialog box, all of our options have been retained. Uh, super useful. Honestly, it could save you a few seconds, and especially if you're dealing with clients that are repeat clients and you've had a very difficult PDF export sort of setting dynamic that you've had to create, that is something that is extremely useful to uh, save a preset for. So we're going to hit export. We're going to wait a second while PDF or while Adobe Acrobat loads, um, and I'll see you when that happens. And hey, would you look at that? Here's the PDF. So right away, you can see we have our crop marks here. We have our bleed marks up here. We have our color bars up here and over here. And then in the middle here, we have registration. Um, registration is something that's used to help to center your uh, page while it's in the printer. Um, that's why it's something that really only printers need to care about. But if it makes you feel better to have it on there, by all means, go for it. Down here, you can see your page information. And down here, we can see what time we exported this at. Please don't pay too much attention to that. And uh, that is exporting a PDF. Um, let me just quickly go over one other thing when it comes to exporting a PDF. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about is press quality. Press quality, um, we're just going to save over the postcard. We're going to hit replace. It's all good. Press quality is exactly what it sounds like. If you're using spot colors or if you're running this through a very high quality printer that is taking several passes when it comes to actually getting the print job done, I would send it to press quality. Um, typically, uh, you would know, you would have a good relationship with your printer and you would know if this is the case that it's being sent to. Um, if you're ever unsure, by all means, ask another team member when you guys are out at an agency um, working on projects and uh, they'll be able to help guide you through. Um, worst case, you could also talk to the print company itself that would be doing the work, and they'd be able to help walk you through what PDF settings you should have set. One thing to note with press quality is the compression is still very high, or sorry, it's still very low, um, meaning that your uh, imagery isn't being compressed very much. Um, but again, it just sort of allows for more information to be stored in the PDF than even in high quality print. And as for PDFX 
one through four. Uh, these are sort of older styles of PDFs. We don't really use them as much anymore. They're also more heavily used in Europe rather than in North America. That's one thing that you do kind of want to be aware of is some of the things that exist within InDesign and other Adobe software is meant for other um, other areas of the world because their workflows and their technical setups are different from ours. So I wouldn't worry too much about using these guys. They don't really do too much different from high quality print to press quality, but high quality print, press quality, and smallest file size are our sort of go-to three options here in North America and specifically in Canada. So I hope that that helped clear up some of the confusion or any questions you might have had, or maybe it was just a good review of the export PDF function in Adobe InDesign. I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.